Welcome back to another web development video where I show you how to make modern websites using HTML5, CSS3, and a little bit of JavaScript. In this video, uh, I'm going to show you how to do a simple toggle in Webflow uh, using um, this uh, mouse click or mouse tap um, element trigger. So we have a basic little setup here. This is a grid with a, a toggle button and then the thing that we want to be toggled is this uh, text here. So what we want it to do is uh, when we click on the button once we want it to show and when we click the button the second time we want it to hide. Uh, and there's a, a few little gotchas here so we're gonna just try to uh, help understand uh, what's going on with this interaction. This is something you can sort of roll over into other things as well. Uh, so once you get the basic concept there are a couple of different things uh, that you can do. So first we have to click and select this button. So you can see it's called show button. <coughs> could have easily been called, we could just as easily call it toggle. Toggle button probably makes more sense. I was trying to do like a show hide thing uh, before, but I, I would, I'm just gonna show you a simple toggle with the same element. Uh, so when we click on this and we go to our interactions tab, uh, what we want is the element trigger and we want to create, um, we want a mouse click or a tap to be the event that triggers this. Um, you could just as easily do a mouse hover or something like that, but what we want to do is a mouse click. <coughs> now we have a couple of different things. So we can define what happens on the first click and we can have uh, identify what happens on the second click. Now, this is gonna be really important uh, because the first click, we want it to bring the text into the page. The second click, because it's a toggle, so we want it to click the same element, we want that to uh, go off of the page. So um, let's define our first click first. So what we wanna do is start a new animation and um, we don't really need any of this stuff down here, so let's just clear it out. So on the first click, we want to start an animation, and let's get our animation started. We're going to sh call it Show Text, and what we want to do is we want to take this element right here. So even though we're clicking this one, we want to animate this text. And so we select this text. I have it. It's just called Content, and what we want to do is come down and do this Hide Show under the miscellaneous. So here's where we set the initial state of this particular piece of text. Now the initial state needs to be set uh, on this class. You could uh, as easily choose the selected element. Um, <coughs> and we don't want it to, uh, It's right now it's display block, so it's just showing as a block level element. We want it to set initially to display none. So we want to hide it from the page whenever it gets onto the page. Um, so when we click our text, an animation is going to run. And because it's a hide show, the animation doesn't have any sort of duration or time to it because it's supposed to happen very quickly, right? It's supposed to either toggle on, hide, or show. Okay. Uh, so at the end of our uh, animation we want it to show so right now it's on display none and we want it to be display block so if we select you can see that it's happening but it's happening very fast like instantaneously because it's a hide or a show okay so if we come to uh, our page you can see that initially it's display none which is what we told it but when we click the toggle now it shows on the page instantaneously. Now when I click again, nothing happens. So we need to set sort of a toggle. We've set toggle on, and now we have to set the toggle off. So we come down to on the second click, so now we're finished with this one, and on the second click uh, we want to do something, start another animation. Now we don't want to mess with this one because that's our show. We want to start a new animation and this one's called hide text. Again, we want to select this element because that's the one that we actually want to animate. And we 
want to do the hide show again. This time we want to hide it. Um, <clears throat> I'm not exactly sure of the reasons why, but for this one, you don't need any sort of initial state. Um, what we want to do is we want to focus on what is the end state on this second click. So our end state needs to be display none again. So when we go and look at that, we can toggle it on. And then for a second click, it toggles it off. On, off, on, off. Okay. So that's the basic toggle. Now what, what if we want the text to fade in? We can do that by going into, so we want to do a fade in for our show text. So we click on there and from the moment the interaction begins, we want to change the opacity. Uh, not of the toggle button, so this is sort of a, a thing, you need, a catch you need to figure out because our um, our text is not on the page it's going to be easy for you to forget you know to go back into here and choose the content and then create a new uh, element if this happens to you all you have to do is right click and do change target click on that and then you can see it says select an element that's on the canvas now it's hidden for us so we're probably going to have to come to the navigator to choose the content block and you just select that content block and now it's changed. So that content block is the thing that we want to change the opacity on, not, not the trigger, the toggle button. So we click here and we want its initial state to be zero opacity. And then we can click the end of our uh, animation. And so by the end of it, we want the, the opacity to be 100%. Uh, you can set the duration here uh, to be whatever you want it to be. If you want it to be, let's say, 0.6 seconds. Now, when we click here, we can see our animation. So this, this play button just runs this single animation. Okay, so you can see that it fades in. <coughs> and whenever we, so when we click the toggle, it fades in. But now when we click to hide it, it just goes away. So if you want a nice fade in, fade out, uh, you have to add a fade out to the hide text animation. And so we come in here and we say, we want to select our element, always content. And we want to add an animation and we want to change the opacity back to zero. Now, if we go back and do this, it, messes everything up a little bit we don't have our animation happening and the reason this is happening is because hide and show and opacity are all happening at the exact same time so if you're hiding it if you're hiding the element but you have an animation running over 0.6 seconds which we should change that to 0.6 <coughs> excuse me if you have an animation happening at the same time this element is now off the page so your animation is not being allowed to run because the element is not actually on the page anymore. So the way to solve this is to take uh, your element that you want to animate or we want to do the opacity, right? So we, uh, I'm just left clicking and dragging and we need to drag it so that that happens before the hide show. So now you can see at zero, as soon as I click this element over here, this is the first thing that's going to run. It's going to do our opacity over 0.6 seconds, and then it's going to take our element off the page. So this should actually give us a fade in, and then enough time to fade out, and then it's removed from the page. So that's a, a little bit of a gotcha on the um, animating the toggle out of the page. You want to make sure that whatever animations you do happen before you do the hide show. Okay, so this should be the last thing. Uh, taking it out of the document. And let's add one more animation to it. So uh, I don't just want it to fade in. I want it to sort of move up a little bit and fade in at the same time. So we can do that by going into our show text. So at the beginning of our animation, it's showing and then it has an opacity that over 6.6 uh, 6 seconds, the opacity is rising from 0 to 
to 100%. Uh, let's just add an, a move animation there uh, as well. So let's move the content, make sure that the content is selected. We want to move the content. Its initial state is going to be, let's say, 10 pixels. And that's going to move it down the page 10 pixels. So positive numbers here move it down the page. Negative numbers move it up the page. And uh, when it gets to the end, uh, when it gets to the end of our animation, we want it to have moved back to our zero. Okay, so you can see that move there. And if you want to check out the animation, you can click here, and you can see that it moves. It moves up 10 pixels, right? So you can see that move happening. It's starting down here and moving up. Okay, so that is our <coughs> uh, move in. So you can see that it moves in and fades out. And then our um, ending hide text, we want to uh, simply do the opposite. So we want it to move down 10 pixels. So we click on here and we add a new animation and that's going to be move and we need to think about, remember we're thinking about what happens at the end of this animation. So we don't have to set an initial state, it already has an initial state and that's where the toggle was before and so for us to do this one we need to think about where do we want it to end up and we want it to end up uh, at 10 pixels down. Okay. So you can see here that now it's fading out and moving down 10 pixels. So when we look at our text to preview, it comes in and up. And then when we toggle it again, it moves it down and fades it out. Okay, so you see our toggle fading down and out. Maybe that's a little slow for you or whatever. You can mess with uh, the duration of the animation. But what I want to show you is it's a little stiff uh, whenever you look at it. And the way that you can keep it from looking so stiff is to change um, not on the initial but on the ending move. So that's where we want to be. Where is it when it ends? Uh, we want to choose the easing. And I'm just going to use a ease in, ease out for each of these. Uh, you can play around with some of these other things. <coughs> And so we'll do it for both the um, when the text comes into the page and when the text goes out of the page. We'll just choose ease. In. Ease is a shorthand for ease in and ease out. So it's like if you've seen the other videos, it's just sort of a smoother, um, real world sort of feel to everything. And whenever we look here, you will be able to see the difference. So you can see how it sort of uh, it doesn't just come in and, and move it. The animation isn't the same speed all the way through. So you can see it's got a little bit more smoothness to it than it did before. If you don't believe me, just go back <laughs> to where the video was before. Uh, we just did that and then you can see the difference between the two. So now we have this nice little toggle and um, it comes in and out of the page whenever the user toggles this uh, button. You could also add some sort of uh, active class and then switch that on to this toggle um, at the same time. But I just wanted to sort of get you the interaction part with the actual um, with the actual element that you're toggling. All right. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them down in the comments section below. Hopefully, this was uh, a little helpful to you as far as being able to toggle things uh, and using an interaction and learning um, about the first click and the second click. So that's, um, it's not just one animation that happens and then there's no other animation. There's, you click the element once and then the second time you click the element something else happens. So it's a, it's a nice little, nice little animation that you can add into your Webflow pages. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, click the bell, and you'll get notifications of new videos when I post them. And also you can follow me on Twitter at Brian Haffercamp, uh, my name, <coughs> and then uh, that link is also down in the description. 
And if you haven't tried Webflow yet, you haven't signed up, uh, there will be a link down in the description to sign up for Webflow. Uh, click that and it will take you right to um, webflow.io and you can sign up for a free account. You don't really have to pay for anything. They give you two projects uh, to sort of kick around with and, and create something before you even have to pay. Um, and you get the features, almost the full features of the program. Uh, so you get a lot of things to play around with and you can follow along with these tutorials if you haven't signed up already. It's a, a free sign up. All right. I think that's it for today and thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.